Welcome to Telltale Books. This one is the next of my Manly Wade Wellman series. His sixth published work. And I know so far I've had to skip two of his stories that I just can't get a hold of. I know they exist, but I can't get a hold of copies online or in books to read them. So I'm up to number six already. And number six is titled The Invading Asteroid. The Invading Asteroid was published as a, a chapbook by Stellar Publishing. Stellar Publishing was the publishing company that Hugo Gernsback created after he lost control of Amazing Stories. And he started publishing um, the Wonder Stories magazines. At, at first he had Air Wonder Stories and Science Wonder Stories and he had a Wonder Stories quarterly and and he merged Air Wonder Stories and Science Wonder Stories into just Wonder Stories and kept that going for a few years. And while he was doing this, he published chapbooks. I think the first one he did was when he was first introducing his new magazines. He published one that was written by Jack Williamson and Miles J. Breuer, which I've already reviewed. Not one of Williamson's best efforts, but um, that was published as a separate chapbook, not a magazine. It was a separate publication that that you received if you subscribed to the magazine. And, and this was probably the same way. If you subscribed to Wonder Stories, you received this chapbook. But this one was done in 1932 and was strictly The Invading Asteroid by Manly Wade Wellman. That's all you got for that chapbook. So it wasn't published in the original magazine. That makes it difficult getting a hold of copies of this story, but fortunately, Fiction House, one of the one of a number of publishers that publishes old pulp science fiction, um, they actually have a, a separate imprint they call Pulp Tales Press. Uh, while Fiction House published this book, which is West Point 3000 AD plus the invading asteroids. So it's two stories in one. The West Point 3000 AD is the longer of the two, and the invading asteroid is really only a novelette. And this is brand new. I ordered it off their website. It, I believe it's print on demand. They print it, they ship it to you. So it's a brand new book. It's very nice. I, I like that that they're doing that. And in the invading asteroid, what's happening? It's it's kind of that same universe as the two other um, stories involving Martians and Earth kind of fighting one another. In this one, the Martians try again to take over the Earth. And, in, and to do so, what they do is they build this huge spaceship, kind of like a Death Star. It's asteroid sized, and they put it in an orbit where it'll periodically pass very close to the Earth. So they don't have to send a whole invading fleet all the way from Mars to Earth. They just wait for this huge asteroid spaceship to approach closely to Earth and shoot their armada out of that, and they'll catch Earth. Um, they hopefully unawares. Hope, they hope that they'll catch Earth unawares. So this is taking place after the events of the first two stories, which are um, when planets clashed and then the Discmen of Jupiter. But this one doesn't have the same characters as those first two stories. So of course you have the steel-jawed hero who figures out how he's going to defeat the Martians. And action and adventure proceeds from there. Um, true pulp fiction, of course. True pulp science fiction. Earth always wins. You can count on it. Um, so, a Aside from a very predictable story, 
you have an interesting invention here of the asteroid like i say it, it's the death star but this is 1932 he's writing about the death star in 1932 um pretty cool the uh, the quality of writing is about the same as the two previous stories it's passable it's okay it's readable and if you if you can tolerate the simplicity and kind of amateur style of of those old pulp stories you can enjoy this well enough but it is kind of a, a predictable standard stock space opera story with stock characters and stock situations and a stock ending there's nothing um that's going to surprise you about this story except for the fact that he wrote about the death star in 1932 um so who would i recommend this to anybody that's a, a manly wade wellman completist if if you're dead set on reading everything that wellman produced if you're going to do like i am and try and get your hands on everything you possibly can by manly wade wellman and read it then you need to read this story otherwise i wouldn't recommend it to much of anybody it's one of those stories that um people point to when they try to criticize the idea of science fiction as literature because this is just too simple it's too amateurish it, you can't hold this up alongside the greats of literature fortunately this isn't everything of science fiction this is only the early stuff and and even among the early stuff there's some really really good stories just not this one <laughs> okay so that's the invading asteroid uh, if you're worried about it these books are not that expensive when I, it doesn't have a price on it I, I think I paid $12.95 for this so not a big deal and it's two stories you get West Point 3000 AD you know it's worth the price so the next one I'll be moving on to by Manly Wade Wellman don't know if I'll be able to get a physical copy of it I don't have one at the moment but number seven will be Rebels of the Moon from 1932 and that sounds like it just could it just might be in the same series same solar system universe that manly created i don't know i'll find out when i read it but it it i'm gonna guess off the top of my head that it's gonna be about the same as as what i've read so far by wellman it's an early piece so i hope you'll you've enjoyed this i hope you'll come back for more we will get to some really good wellman works it just may take a little while um, and who knows, maybe I will run into something in these early works that really blows my mind. It could happen. So, like this video, subscribe to the series, or to our channel, I mean. And come on back for more of Manly Wade Wellman and a lot of other authors.